On today's episode of Annual Pass, we talk to a gentleman who was paid to play with Lego. That's like my dream job. Find out more right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a brand new episode of Annual Pass. This is the podcast where we talk about all things theme parks, ride shows, attractions, designs, and building. If it happens in a theme park, it happens here on Annual Pass. I'm your host, Jack Patillo, and of course, joining me as always is the lovely, talented, beautiful BK. Hi, Beeks. Hello, Jack. How are you doing today? I'm doing fabulous. What about you? I'm doing quite well. Thank Mm -hmm. you for asking. Welcome to episode 101. We've made it. You know, 101 is the code for a ride breaking down in a theme park. Is it? Yeah. We got a 101. Yeah. If you ever hear like, oh, this ride's gone 101, it means it's broken down. Oh, man. Yeah. And it, for any form or, f- or for any reason at all, it's like, oh, it's down. It's 101. <laughs> and then 102 is when it's back up. Like, oh, oh we're going man. 102. Cool. We're back up. Anyway, okay, there's okay. a little theme park knowledge for you there. Hey, if you want to follow us on social media stuff, you can follow us. We are annual underscore pass on Twitter and on Instagram. We're annual pass pod over on TikTok, youtube.com slash annual pass. If you want to see our beautiful faces on camera today and today, especially we actually have some visual stuff to go along because oh, yeah. we have an interview today with uh, Tom Renouf, who is a, he formerly worked at Legoland and was a, a builder. He's like a master builder. And so he worked his way through From being like a builder to a designer to like working with the creative teams and all kinds of cool stuff in the parks all over in like in Discovery Lands and Lego stores. Really, really cool stuff. It's kind of my dream job, BK. Really? Because like I had a feeling it was, (laughs) but I didn't want to assume. So I was going to ask, is it like your dream job or something? A little bit, a little bit. (laughs) Getting to build Lego all day and getting paid for it. So cool. So Uh, lucky. That's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. But uh, I got a lot of questions for Tom. I'm sure you do as well. Oh, yeah. I'm curious. So let's just dive right on into the episode or into the episode. Let's just dive right on into the interview. How about that? Yeah. Here we go. This is our interview with Tom. Let's now talk with Tom Renew from ThemeParkCreative.com. Tom, welcome to Annual Pass. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. It's good. Great to be here. Awesome, awesome. So you reached out to us through our our email account, which is fantastic. And you're like, hey, fan of the show, by the way, I do some cool stuff you might be interested in hearing about. So tell, tell the pass holders what you do and why you thought you might be interesting for this show. So um, I, I uh, just do a little thing uh, where I basically got paid to play with Lego all day. Um, <laughs> My dream. Ah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, and it was one of those opportunities, Jack, I know especially you're a big fan of Lego. So had to reach out and, uh, and see if you guys were interested in learning all about Lego and how they create those crazy, insane models at all the lego land parks around the world so oh oh my gosh yeah i mean i I love nothing is nothing is more spectacular seeing giant lego sculptures like if you've ever been in like disney springs in florida there's like the dragon that's been in the water i feel like the thing's been in the water for like 20 years millennia yeah it used to used to breathe fire i don't know if you knew that but back in the or not fire it's gonna be like smoke out of his nose like actual fire doesn't that melt the lego no that might be bad for it that might be bad for (laughs) it but uh but yeah that that is so cool so you uh so okay explain explain the process so like you went from some Someone who was a fan of Lego to suddenly you're you're making these things. How did you end up in that position? <laughs> so I I actually went on a, a really crazy journey. Um, you know, like say starting off growing up with Lego, just like most people do. Um, and I then moved over from England to uh, America and, and pursued a degree in 3D modeling, um, but and computer animation. Um, and then wound up finding myself interviewing for a position uh, with uh, Merlin Entertainments, who are the the company behind all the Lego land parks and um, uh, places like Thought Park and things as well. I know you guys have have been to Thought Park. So they're actually, they're actually um, the second largest uh, theme park company uh, in, in, in the world um, behind Disney. Um, But uh, yeah, not many people have heard of the actual company behind all of that. So they're um, sneaky, they're sneaky. (laughs) <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I ended up um, interviewing as a designer um, for, for the Lego model production facility um, based just down the road from Legoland, Florida here and um, actually got taken on uh, as a builder first. So I, I was given the opportunity to uh, get taken on into the hands on role and then uh, got promoted into in, into the design side of stuff from there. And uh onwards and upwards into even more Lego involved stuff. So uh, I had the opportunity to design uh, some of the, the, the new upcoming Lego uh, ride vehicles and things with the creative team. And wow. um, wow. yeah, really kind of 
that there's there's a lot more to Lego than just Lego pieces. Let me tell you that. So, <laughs> well, okay. So exp explain your role. So like as a builder, let's walk through your like the different sure. roles you've taken on. So as a builder in my head, you're just like there's like here's a bunch of Lego bricks. And do they give you instructions? And they're like, okay, just make this. Like we just need <laughs> donkeys to make something basically. Or is it more like they tell you, here's a picture of a building, recreate this building. Like what was the process in that level? So as a builder, you, uh, you do get uh, instructions, but kind of not your typical instructions that you would think of. Okay. Um, you know, as, as, as you'd get with a set, it's more a case of the design team will create um, something digitally. Um, they actually use software that's curated by Lego specifically um, for designing like Lego sets and things. So um, and, and we would take that software and instead of it being a piece by piece guide, you know, oh, step, you know, yeah. 126, you place this brick here and, you know, onto the next one. It's more a case of we'll get given uh, a model and we'll do, take it layer by layer. Okay. So whether it's something teeny tiny, like a little mini land car or like a little person right up to, um, you know, the big stadiums and things that we've been building. Um, it's literally a layer by layer piece. And then um, that gets broken up into sections to sort of fit into containers and things. But um, yeah, so you would literally start off at layer one and that is effectively a brick or a plate layer tool. And then from there you build upwards right until the tippy top. Wow. <laughs> that's that's what so so uh, like how big are these things you're doing you're talking about like individual like smaller pieces up to a larger thing like when you're when you come in as a builder like say i say like you know i land my dream job okay i'm now a lego builder fire my first my first role they're like here you go here's your first job do they ease you into it it's like here you're gonna make a little lego land rover or is it like here's a stadium good luck here's new york city <laughs> <Yeah>. have fun <laughs> so there, there, there is and there isn't, uh, you know, sort of okay. depending on, on, on when you'd kind of start, um, you know, whatever the need there is, whatever project that the, the team are working on kind of depends on what you kind of get put on. So I, I know um, uh, a couple of my friends that I, I uh, started with, um, when we first got out of training, um, they actually got put on the MGM Grand for the Las Vegas cluster of Miniland. Wow. Um, and we're building that thing. Um, right from the right from the word go, and uh, I was I was sat there building little parrots that were going in the <laughs> hotel rooms at, uh, at some of the upcoming resorts. So yeah, it, it, it's kind of a per project basis, but okay. Um, yeah, you can be on some really crazy things right from right from the word go. Yeah, no, I'm I'm curious, like how how is a builder judged? Is it based on speed? Is it based on accuracy? Like, I mean, it, when they when they're judging the team, when they're like looking at like all the builders, like okay, who's gonna be our next one? You have stats. Who, who are we gonna raise up? Yeah, like when I worked at a grocery <laughs> store, we had something called IPMs, which are items per minute. How many things you scan per minute? They track this stuff. And so I'm curious, what what is the metric that they judge you based on as a builder? So for for what I understand, that used to be the case um, a couple of years before I started. Um, but thankfully, it was more a case of um, assessing people's problem solving skills, okay. um, which was one of the big reasons that I, I got taken on. Um, I, I'm a really good uh, problem solver. So um, and, and thinking outside the box and, you know, knowledge of, of the Lego elements and things and just kind of there, there is an element still of, you know, oh, how quickly can this person, you know, you know fire up, you know, the, the, the Empire State Building or whatever. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's it's more based on your, your problem problem solving skills. And uh, I was going to ask problem solving yeah. skills. Is that because like maybe these bills because they don't have instructions like require you to kind of finesse things like it's, I, I just I Absolutely. don't know anything about Lego, but I think it's awesome. So I'm just like <laughs> curious what you mean by that. <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah, when 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 I was mentioning earlier, we said we were building in layers. Uh, you're you're absolutely right. It's a case of being able to figure out the best way and the strongest way possible to take a certain shape that be, can be quite complex and organic, and build that in such a way and use the right pieces that we have available to us to 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 create that that um, 
yeah, to, cre- to create that part, really. So. I was going to say, right. do you ever run out of pieces? <laughs> yeah. Is that, like, common? <laughs> like, you know, you're building, they give you buckets, I assume, like, just truckloads of certain pieces, but... I don't know how often you get resupplied during a bill. Like, is yeah. there is it like a wall of Lego bricks that you can just go and be like, OK, I need a bucket. Is it is it like Lego Masters where, you know, you have builders just running to the wall with their thing and <laughs> scooping them in and Will Arnett's yelling at you? Well, th- thankfully, the you know, we don't have a big clock above our heads, you know, making <laughs> sure that we're, 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 we're timed on that. But um, yeah, th- think of Lego Masters, but on steroids. We have, oh, wow. um, you know, racks down the center of the building. Um, you know, and it's all sorted by element, by color, by, um, yeah, by, by what it might be used for. And all, all the more common elements are at the front and the more specialty items towards the back. And we've got a, an entire warehouse dedicated to, to Lego bricks that we, we keep bringing in and, and, and using. So, oh man, so cool. Now, okay. Here's one thing, BK, you might not know about this, okay. but I, I'm sure that Tom does. So there is an, there's an, a market where you can go. There's like, basically people will design their own Lego, you know, sets and whatnot. And there are, there are websites you can go to be like, I need these pieces. Like I need 400 of these pieces or, okay. you know, yeah, I, like here's a, a part list I need. It's like, here's a, here's a, like a seller who has all the parts. And so that being said, there are some pieces that are very unique, like only exist if you buy like certain sets. Like there's crazy like, set or yeah, something. Yeah, there's like okay. one very unique piece. And I imagine like those pieces become very expensive. It's like, oh, one little Lego brick, but it's only one specific one. It could cost like 50 bucks. For, like, 50 bucks? Yeah. And so I imagine, Tom, you probably have access to gold mines a of just, just like, oh, here's a bag of, of $50 pieces. Like, did any of those ever maybe like find their way out to your car or anything? <laughs> I know you're not there anymore. Maybe that's the reason why. No, I'm kidding. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> but I mean, like, I mean, yeah, you, I mean, I'm assuming you're in the Lego sort of world. You know of this kind of stuff. Did, were you ever try, like, did anyone ever try to coerce you to be like, hey, <laughs> can maybe you can like some of these fall into a trash can and end up in my my truck or anything like that? So maybe not specifically like the Lego elements themselves, okay. um, but yes, we we had access to you know a wide range of stuff that that wasn't even publicly available. Oh. Um, oh. But um, it was I was I was absolutely the first person everyone would call when they wanted a discount on Lego sets. <laughs> that was yep. I had a queue out the door as long as my arm for oh, man. people who wanted, yeah. And what was it a good discount at least, or were you able to get like friends and family discounts? Oh, uh, uh, I think our regular discount was twenty uh, percent, but they oh, used to man. do events approaching like um, Christmas time where they would do fifty percent off, Tom. and they would do damaged box sales, and yeah, Yo, you were absolutely. The where where were you when I was trying to get my Optimus <laughs> Prime and my Millennium Falcon? Come on, oh, man. Millennium Falcon is like six hundred dollars, BK. Dude, can you just yep. be my uncle? Like, I just ah, <laughs> uh, so the big T awesome. Rex, like Jurassic Park T Rex, like three hundred dollars. Three hundred. Yeah, it's. But I I mean, the good. And I, I will say, so I've been a, I've been a fan of Lego since I was a child. And so, like, it's been fun watching Lego kind of react because mm. like Lego for a while, like almost shut down as a company. Like there was actually an article recently, like Bionicle brought yeah. Lego back from the death, essentially. Yep. And now Lego has embraced this idea of like there's a generation of, of people like, you know, like sort of the, the older or the the younger Gen X's, the solar, sort of like older millennials, kind of that I call it the Oregon Trail generation because that's where I fall. <laughs> Like you're born in like the, the, you know, early to mid eighties that have grown up in like love Lego as a kid. And now Lego is making sets that are made for adults. Mm -hmm. And it's like, they're making like sculpture sets. And like, they started with like some of like the simple kind of like uh, design sets, but now it's like, there's stuff not made for kids anymore. And it's awesome. Like, I mean, as a Lego adult, you know, it's kind of cool to see this stuff. I'm like, I get to make some really, really cool stuff that I'm proud of. And I'm like, this is something I can put on a shelf. I, I've got, you know, the Voltron set back at home that's like on my bookshelf and it's super rad. And, you know, Optimus Prime, like there's some there's so many cool sets now that are like specifically targeted towards people like me that maybe have some, you know, in a disposable income that want to show off something neat. And also for me, Lego has always been a, uh, a form of almost like meditation. Like if I have a stressful day or if, sure. I, if I'm ever like just like really just like freaking out, I can open up a box of Lego and just sit there and just slowly build something. And something about piecing chaos into like a set is just like so rewarding and relaxing to me. And I can only imagine, like, as a job, That's like, like very Buddhist of you. Dude. Oh, thank you very much. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> but like, as a job, like, do you still get that kind of experience? Like, do you do you look at Lego now and still like, do you get like knots in your stomach, or do you still appreciate the art of it? 
I I still go out into the big wide world and see everything in Lego bricks. It's <laughs> it's uh yeah. Uh-oh, you know that, the, that might be a problem. You might want to see someone about that. Actually, <laughs> oh, it's 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 surprising just how how much it changes your your view of of um you know the the world out there. You know, there's all these wonderful you know pieces of architecture and things around that that you know everyone's especially uh you know in in the studio there they're they're always trying to figure out hey how can we overcome this challenge to recreate this and it it, it becomes a part of your life it really does wow yeah it is interesting looking at like we we have some images from some of the things you've worked on and it's cool to see like mm-hmm. you know something like a building you know obviously like the you know a building is is a rel- relatively square shape and like right. bricks are square they're not typically rounded and you see something like that it's like okay i can kind of like i can wrap like me personally i can wrap my head around doing that i can conceptualize yeah that, right but then like you've got a design of like a spyro figure that is like Mm -hmm. curves and like shapes and like has emotion in his face and it's like that's the kind of stuff that is true artistry that i just can't wrap my head around is there is there a step going from like the i'm making 90 degree angles and very blocky things to suddenly kind of like can grasp doing like more like 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 uh, like natural sort of textures how do you start thinking in the fourth dimension because i think that's (laughs) what you do right because like it's three-dimensional but then there's like an an ascendance like please put me on how can we get there yeah it's it's again you know the 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 software that that we have access to is is incredible and um you know especially with my background from uh, the 3d modeling and, and and animation side of stuff you know being able to portray the um emotion and character of, of these blocky blocky figures and things um really it's just kind of a combination of of i a lot of the time would start off with a 3d model so like spyro is a great example there um you know starting from scratch 3d model it and then we were able to import it into software that kind of turned it into you know the basic kind of lego bricks wow. um itself um but it would kind of come in a bit messy and janky and everything so you know we'd have to go in behind the software and kind of tidy it up add cal- color to it you know uh and just make tweaks here and there just to kind of emphasize you know some of the features and things and um but it's 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 yeah really really neat software that that kind of gets us started to give us that starting point and then we kind of just refine it from there well, so okay, so let, let's take your next step in your career. So you went, you were a builder, mm-hmm. and it sounds like you're, you're, you went, you became a designer. So I'm assuming this is where this kind of software came into play. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So it, and it's, it's the same software we would use as a builder, um, but as a designer, obviously, you know, you, you're starting from layer one, and instead of following the, the pattern to build the final thing, you're, 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 you know, using uh, online reference, you're using 3D models. Um, you know, whatever kind of techniques to, to um, figure out how to best capture um, a lot of the, the elements on these buildings and figurines and such to, um, yeah, to, to, to give the builders to, to um, you know, build these good, strong, sturdy Lego models that aren't going to get broken when they're being shipped halfway around the world. So <laughs> well, that's a good challenge. That, that's another question for you then. So I am curious, it, it is as a amateur Lego builder, it is uh, just completely evil to glue Lego pieces together. But I imagine <laughs> as someone who's putting Lego designs in a park, in hotels, it sounds like, do, do you have to go in with glue on all the layers and keep it all together? Absolutely. Oh. Yeah, our our stuff is smothered smothered in glue. Oh, but no. uh, it's, uh, it's, for the, it's more for the Lego models, you know, to... to um, you know, stop the the general public from you know ripping pieces off and stealing all that, and yeah. um, you know, because unfortunately accidents do happen. So yeah, I mean, I, I, have, I have friends who work in escape rooms, and if things aren't nailed down, they will walk away. So <laughs> I can only imagine. Absolutely. Lego that being said, yeah. how often do you glue something down, step away, maybe grab lunch, come back? Uh oh, that's not right. <laughs> uh, what do we do? Like, do you have like, is there anti glue? Anti glue. What happens in that situation? You just get the sledgehammer out. Do you start over? Do you? What, what do you do? That sounds like fun. So it's it's a lot of thinking ahead, a lot of kind of forward planning and such. So, um, e- even with that, yeah, absolutely, accidents do happen. So, um, in a short answer, hammer and chisel um, <laughs> is exactly how it. Bing, yep. Bing, bing, bing. 
Oh, no. You know, if if it's reasonably early on, yeah, you could probably get away with throwing away, um, you know, m- maybe a couple of bricks here and there. But, okay. um, you know, certainly if you are like three quarters of the way up, uh, you know, I don't know, some skyscraper that's destined for Manhattan, then, you know, you can't really start over. So it's a case of one of the things they teach us in training is hammer and chisel. You know, you get stuck in there, you know, rip some of that stuff away <laughs> and how how well can you patch that thing up without you know um ma- making it obvious that, oh, that there was an issue there do you know of any like uh mistakes that have happened on massive builds that m- maybe someone can go to like the lego store and like in front of rockefeller or like in london <laughs> and like maybe actually spot like oh there's the little there's the there's a the little ding on it is there anything that we can maybe keep an eye out for off off the top of my head thankfully our team especially where a uh, you know, phenomenal uh, uh, patching stuff up. But if if you look really closely at some of the uh, some of the the giant skyscrapers, um, you know, like at Lego there, New York or what have you, you might just see you know just little gaps here and there that might just kind of indicate that you know, hey, so someone may have made a boo boo here. Someone, someone had a rough day right there. And like, yes. Oh, gosh. Man, that's all. So, okay. So as a designer, so are you, is Mm -hmm. this basically like not a glorified builder, but I mean, is it still like you're, you're creating something from scratch and kind of working on it? Or would you design something and then hand down to the builders themselves? Or was that like your, your next step up where like, were you a part of the creative team and then you're designing things to then hand on to somebody else? So it, it, it's, um, you know, a case of we would, we would make something digitally a lot of the time uh, and then hand it off to the builders. Um, but there were certainly many an instance where you know the designers especially get itchy fingers and they go and uh, they go go and hit the build floor and uh, you know find stuff to you know kind of make little prototypes and things and um, you know hey if we're going to use this um, you know brick bending technique or or something you know what what brick is the bending. physical limitations of these uh, uh, of, of the Lego product so yeah. That's, that's pretty awesome. So I, I am curious. So like you talk about brick bending and, you know, I don't know if you, PK, have you watched any of Lego Masters? Sorry, I'm just still on brick bending. I keep thinking it like water bending or fire bending, <laughs> like earth said, bending. Tom, I'm like, just you and just Lego. the wall of Lego. <laughs> and... So, uh, so what, what is big ben- brick bending? What is that? Yeah, okay. Ex- explain that that term to BK I'm a noob. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there's there's some very cool things you, you can do with uh, certain Lego bricks if they if you use them in a, a certain way. So especially things like the little one by two pieces. What you can actually do is you can stack them in a way that with the built in tolerances of the Lego product, as you create more and more in in like a straight line the tolerances will allow you to bend it so you can create an arc or even a circular shape by actually physically bending the the whole product and that's how we can create things like bay windows on buildings and um you know try and get sort of the circular towers and such Oh yeah, there's there's whole YouTube channels dedicated to like mm-hmm. really testing the limits of Lego. And as a matter of fact, I just watched recently. There's a gentleman who does Lego designs, and he designed a steam powered truck. He made like an 18 wheeler that was power or not steam powered, air powered. So he like had a, like a like a two liter bottle of, of like an empty bottle of Coke and like filled it with like pressurized it, filled it with air. The air from that ran into an engine that he can, was able to control remotely, and he could go forward, backward. He could turn the wheels all off off of air power. It's it's wild what Lego has gotten into. You are bringing me into a whole new world. Oh, it's right so now. cool. It's so neat. And, <laughs> I mean, it's definitely one of those things. Like as a kid, you grow up and you're like, oh, I wish I could do everything in Lego. Then yeah. you become an adult and like I can make everything in Lego if I try hard <laughs> enough, you know. And so it's been really cool. Now, do you do you watch shows like like Lego Masters? Obviously, has been a big show the last few years. Will Arnett's been three seasons in America. I think they've done like like Europe and Australia, a couple other countries. But some of my favorite things they do on the show, they did it the first season. I don't know if they did this. They didn't do a third season, but maybe the second season where they built a bridge. So they basically had like a, like a six or eight foot span. And using just traditional Lego and, and Technic, which is a form of Lego, they had to build a bridge that spanned the gap. And then what they did was they put the bridges out. They judged them based on the looks of them. And also they judged them based on how much weight they could hold. And they started putting weight on the middle of these bridges. One team made it up to, I think, 2,000 pounds before they like ran out. They literally were like bringing in sandbags from the lighting crew to try to add more weight to it. And it held it, which is super awesome. 
probably very, very dangerous. <laughs> so I don't think they did it <laughs> after. The, like after they did that, they're like, okay, we're not going to do that again. That was that could have gotten bad. But I mean, that's the kind of stuff that I love seeing, like Lego taken to like a real use scenario. Like, do you watch stuff like that? Or are you still blown away by stuff like that? Or is that something you're like, oh, that's old hat? Like we did that at the office the other day. <laughs> A bit of both, being completely <laughs> honest. It's, it's um, you know, th th there's so much of a community um, at, at, at the studios um, that everyone, you know, will watch the latest episode of Lego Masters and then we'll come in and talk about it on, you know, the Monday morning and what have you. And a lot of people will actually kind of get inspired by some of the stuff that they've seen people do on there and, um, you know, try it out in, the, in some of their stuff. So it's oh, wow. kind of a... Yeah, it's it's kind of a, a, a you kind of a, a adapt ideas from different places. Um, you know, there's a lot of um, that that goes on with with Lego Masters, but also you know some of these guys on YouTube and things. And um, I don't know if you've uh, gotten into any of the re rebrickable designs yet, oh, yeah. Jack. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. I, I'm um, looking at the, the there's a Johnny Five. So basically, mm -hmm. rebrickable. What, what Tom's speaking about is like people will go say like you can buy this set. And using just the pieces from the set, turn it into something else. So Johnny Five was a robot from Short Circuit, Short Circuit 2 back in the 80s and 90s. And there is a set. It's a giant like builder. It's like a, like a mechanical builder that like can pick up bricks and stuff. It's like a giant earth moving machine, okay. basically. And someone made it where if you buy that set, you can rebuild it as Johnny Five. And he actually rolls around and stuff, too. What? It's the coolest thing ever. And like That's so cool. And people take I mean, people take the time. And it's like, I mean, a lot of those people will be like, here's the here's the design. If you want to tip me, here's my PayPal account. Mm -hmm. But it's like they're not saying like, you know, you have to like like pay me for right. this and it's like that's so cool and the community is really really neat and again oh, that's awesome as people get older you start seeing like you know people getting back into it again like mm -hmm. adam savage has been building stuff on his channel on tested and it's like that's really cool to see like lego has gone from this thing where it's like oh it's just a kid's toy to now it's like oh no this is like you know it's it's one of the things that you know i know kids will maybe play with lego and then they find a love of architecture because they were yeah. building stuff and it's like they, i became an architect or mm -hmm. an engineer because of my love of lego and it's it's one of those it's one of those toys that become so much more the older you get and you look back and realize like oh that may have influenced me a whole lot back totally. in the day. So then so do you do you have any sets that you remember as a kid? Or I'm assuming you played with Lego as a kid. So like do you have any, any particular memories or instances where you're like this was something that influenced me and made me want to do this when I got older? I, I the, the short answer to that is everything. Uh, let's be <laughs> honest. Um but uh, no, I, I specifically remember as I was younger, um, you know, I would, and and I'm talking like, you know, three, four years old. I was I was trusted with the, you know, the 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 older kids, you know, Lego bricks really early on, and you know, I'd be sat in the middle of my grandparents' house, and just the 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 bucket of Lego bricks would be poured onto the mat, and and away I'd go. But um, <laughs> The, the one that, that really kind of sticks with me uh, early on is I, I also have a, a background in motorsport as well. So I was really into all the, the like Formula One sets that came out. And uh, there was one year Lego uh, released a Ferrari pit stop set. <laughs> and I played with that until, you know, from dusk till dawn. It was <laughs> fantastic um, until, you know, we ended up moving somewhere and it all fell apart and it was never seen again. But as as it happens with Lego, but uh, yeah, yeah, Le Le Lego doesn't travel very well unless you glue it together. None. So, uh, yeah, I, I had one of the um, the Lego, uh, not Falcon Nine, the uh, uh, the rocket, the big uh, Saturn V rocket, mm. and I had mm -hmm. it up on a shelf, and one of my cats knocked it off, and no. it, it's it's already built in three pieces, but it hit the floor and just kind of exploded, and I was like, oh come on, man, I would have sobbed. Just so I tears. so literally I put it in. I was like, well, I'll get to it. And I put it in a box, and then I was like, I'll deal with it someday. And then one day I was just having like a rough day, and I'm like, you know what? Took it out, and I basically disassembled what was already kind of broken. I'm like, I'll rebuild it. And then Lego now, you can go on their website and download any instruction manual. Oh. So it's like, I, I had no idea where the original manual was, but it's like, I go to the website, and literally it's like page by page. Nice. And you can set it like on an iPad, and just swipe from page to page. Nice. It's so cool. And uh, so, so like modern and such a smart thing to do. And uh, yeah, and then I rebuilt it. And so now it's back up on my back up on my shelf, higher up where the cats can't get to it now. <laughs> Perfect. But, but for me, for me as a kid, it was the Lego space stuff. There was uh, like a Lego moon base, but there was the monorail. The Lego space monorail what? was the coolest set ever. It was this like this, you know, you could build out the track cover you want. Uh -huh. And it wouldn't like it had a little switch on it where you okay. go like either forward or reverse. And you could set it where it would hit a certain spot or a certain spot and it would trigger it to then go the opposite direction. Oh. 
so that's would just so go cool. back and forth, back and forth. And I would sit there and just like <laughs> on our like on our kitchen table, and my parents like we have to eat, and I'm like shut up. And then we just keep building Lego. It was, <laughs> it was great. So <laughs> so you, okay, so you went from the design team to the creative team. So what what is that step like? So as the creative team, is it like? Does Lego corporate be like, hey, we're we're working on the, you know, Legoland project in Orlando. We need you to come up with the next thing. Or is it like we're doing a medieval themed area? What can you come up with? How, how does that process work? So uh, in essence, yeah, effectively, you, you pretty much hit the nail on the head. But uh, it. Uh, certainly, certainly my, my role within that team was to, to, to kind of take the guys that, that would... Um, so there'd be a team that came up with the blue sky idea, like they would, you know, whether it was IP related or not, you know, they would come up with an idea and concept for a ride and things and, you know, kind of rough sketches, napkin sketches and things. So it was my job then to basically flesh that out into a bigger idea. Um, so we would be in touch with, uh, you know, ride manufacturers, prop vendors, all that, all, all, all those kind of companies and, um, you know, I, I was literally taking Lego bricks, exploding them up to 25 times the size, uh, and then placing them on a roller coaster chassis uh, to, you know, create these these new like roller coaster uh, ride vehicles and you know log flume boats and things. So wow, um, yeah. So so you design something like that, like you take these giant bricks and then do you just send the the plans back to someone else and they manufacture it? Is that how it works? Effectively, yeah. So, wow. so in that regard, it would be taking a 3D model uh, that I created, and basically kind of combining it. And uh, yeah, um, wh whether they would, um, you know, physically 3D on a giant 3D printer print this thing out, or you know, they they would basically create a mold from that, um, and then create like a an FRP, a fiberglass, um, you know, cast of it. Uh, and that would then become the the cladding for the the roller coaster chassis or the or the ride vehicle chassis. That's so cool. So uh, so how many roller coasters or how many how many roller coaster vehicles have you designed? So so far I'm at uh, three roller coaster vehicles and two log flumes that I've I was a part of of, of the team that that designed them. So wow, um, that's so cool. Only one of them has been announced to the public yet, okay. um, which is is. <laughs> It's the uh, the 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 lion for the uh, Lego Mythica for Legoland Germany. Okay. Um, I, I, it, yeah, and my my design wasn't wasn't kept right through till the final, but I certainly did quite a lot of the the design work helping out with that one. So you influence yeah, in yeah, such I'm a way you can you can still see elements. Absolutely. Of it. Cool. That's Absolutely. Cool. Oh, that's yeah. Awesome. With, without breaking any NDAs, uh, it, can you yep. tell us if any of the things you worked on will end up in the states at any point? Maybe. Or will that break in? in terms I don't want to get you in trouble. So, <laughs> in terms of rights, yes. Um, no. Okay. okay. We got to go to Europe <laughs> now. Beaks, we got to go to Europe. Yeah, I guess we're traveling now. Yeah. Okay. I would. I would say. I would say maybe head more more over towards Asia for okay. some of my stuff. I mean, yeah. I guess if I have to, if I have to go to you know like Shanghai or Japan, like mm -hmm. I mean, if you're if you're twisting my arm, we'll make uh, Ben Lexa. Can we? Can you give me the annual pass credit card, please? I'm just saying, Lego, uh, Lego Gundam ooh, would be, be awesome. Ben, can we make that happen? <laughs> I'm hiding that until all of the park maps have been sent out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Fine. That is that is so cool, man. Well, so so what was your what was your favorite piece you got to work? I know you're no longer with Lego, you know, with Lego Design, a Lego mm -hmm. company anymore. But what was your favorite thing you got to have your hands on with? There, there's been so many. Um, that you know, we we kind of had our hands in so many different pies, doing things for hotels, doing things for you know the the Lego Discovery Centers, uh, which are the smaller kind of more based ones. Um, you know, they're they're a different scale to obviously the Legoland parks and things. Um, but one of the the things I got to um, you know kind of touch on um, just before I left was we uh, designed and built the SoFi Stadium for Legoland California, yeah, which we, today we have some images of it. Is, it looks amazing. That's it. Yeah. Um, that that to date currently holds the world record for the largest Lego stadium. That's that is so cool. And it, it looks like you built it in sections, too. Right. So, yes. How many do you have an estimation of how many bricks you have in that thing? And it is it's not it's not minifigure oh. scale. It's just below a minifigure scale. It looks like. Right. Uh, so that one is actually mini land scale, which I have a little mini land figure here that I can show you guys. Yeah, sure. On the video. So it's it's. 
compared to a minifigure. Oh, it's actually a bit bigger. Okay. It's a actually bit quite a bit bigger. It's huge. It's wow. massive. Maybe okay. So we have an yeah. image here. It's a little bit. It's a little bit tricky to 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 see in just yep. the image. But I think in person, it's got to be like. I mean that that is. Huge. That's gonna be up to your waist or something. Or at least for me, I'm kind of short. You are a little tiny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> I think I think the the back of that stadium, yeah, kind of came just above my waist. Wow. So, uh, and then we built an entire roof section that went over the top of that as well. And wow. yeah, it's that, that, absolutely enormous. That is so, so where can someone see that? I'm assuming out in Los Angeles somewhere, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, so that one is Carlsbad. That's uh, Legoland, California. Um, the okay. park have got it proudly on display as part of Miniland there now. Nice. Now, and I'm looking. So I am curious though, because I'm looking at the image here, mm -hmm. and on the inside, so the marquee that like wraps around the stadium, you know, like they run like images and like mm -hmm. scores and whatnot. It says lamb, and then bargers. <laughs> is that? Or are you not allowed <laughs> to write like because it is a pro football team? You couldn't write Rams and Chargers. I'm, I'm Absolutely. Guessing? That's <laughs> so yeah. funny. Yeah. Yeah. So to avoid the uh, avoid avoid the copyright and such, uh, you know, there there are some places that actually, you know, will kind of will we'll reach out to, and they'll be like, yeah, absolutely, go ahead, you know, go crazy with it. But uh, yeah, so so we'd have to sometimes get creative with some of the the names that we would use. So, nice. so is, and is there any story behind us... bargers? <laughs> <laughs> so you've got barges and I think slams oh, on the there. Slams. Oh, so yeah, the kind slams. of, okay. so kind of, you know, just kind of, um, you know, some some of the noises that you might have uh, from football and you know people barging through okay. and and all that yeah. kind of thing. So I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Yeah. I see what you did there. <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah. That is so cool. So you you moved on from Lego and so so what are the what is the kind of stuff you're working on now? So the stuff I'm working on now is incredibly top secret and <laughs> I can't can't speak about. Um, Don't worry, but no it's, one listens it's... to this podcast anyway. Just tell everyone. <laughs> it's you know, a yeah. small audience. Me to you. Tell but, me. Uh, so I work for a, a fabrication company now called uh, Nassel, okay. um, that are base, based in downtown Orlando, or just outside of downtown Orlando. Uh, um, we do everything from zoos, aquariums, theme parks, uh, everything in between. And uh, Let's just say that there's a, a certain big project going on in the local area here that we are very, very much a big part of. Are you thinking so, what I'm thinking, Jack? I'm thinking. I'm thinking maybe something I'm epic. Thinking, I'm thinking something I'm very, saying. very epic. <laughs> I'll, I'll, my I'll, my I'll lips start, are sealed. I'll start. I'll have to maybe do some deep diving. See We're if gonna I can figure have out to where, do some sleuthing. Okay. Yeah, I'll reach out to Alicia Stella. Absolutely. She seems to be all over the uh, the the news and whatnot out there. <laughs> that is cool, man. That is cool. So so that is something now. Like, are, I mean, I mean, I'm assuming you're working on some really really cool stuff that obviously you can't talk about. But I mean, like that. How does someone land? I mean, obviously your career has been very interesting. Like going from building brick, you know, started as a 3D modeler to now. I'm assuming you're doing design work there on a new yep. attraction and whatnot if someone was trying to get into this field do you have any tips or advice for someone who might be looking to get in the world of theme parks and from like maybe the fabrication design side sure i mean a absolutely just stick with it and 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 keep trying and, and don't lose faith in it um it took me my goodness it took me a good sort of five years to really kind of figure out where i wanted to be in the industry and kind of how to get there and then uh, i mean heck it took me coming over from England to America to, you know, getting my degree and then, you know, jumping in, trying to uh, network and, and figure out, you know, what places were hiring and all that kind of stuff. So it, it took me a while, but, we, you know, I finally kind of like cracked the crack, cracked the algorithm, if you will, and, and, and managed to, 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 to get in there. It's just networking and, and, and yeah, getting your name out there and just kind of, sticking with it and just keeping an eye on those job sites really yeah. it's now what would you would you say orlando like so like people always say if you want to make movies you got to move to hollywood do you think orlando is kind of like you want to be in the theme park industry you need to be in orlando absolutely okay. especially at the moment because uh universal creative is based more over here and imagineering's moving over here now and such so this is definitely going to become the the big hub certainly for the united states at least Okay. Um, for the for all the theme park stuff, yeah. Well, I, I hear I hear real estate's really cheap in Orlando right now, BK. So yeah, maybe we need to. <laughs> no, no, maybe maybe if all of us went in, we could get a small one bedroom place yeah. somewhere. That'd be great. But... <laughs> well, awesome, Tom. Thank you so much for joining us on Annual Pass today. I'm I'm fascinated by the work you've done, and I'm really looking forward to maybe someday. Will you will you let us know when you know your NDAs are up or they announce stuff, and you're like, oh, I actually had a hand in that. Can you come back on the show, maybe? Absolutely. And tell us when when Please. that happens, which I'm. Sure absolutely be, i mean you know if it's 
But so if it's what I'm thinking, it might be a few years before he's allowed okay, to come on fine, and be fine. like, you know. Mm -hmm. Do you know what? Technically, right now, the only thing that's been announced for Epic Universe is Super Nintendo World. That's it. That's all they've announced. That is true. Officially announced. That's all they've announced. Hmm. That's wild. And hmm. meanwhile, it's like, you know, you have bio reconstruct and we've just we know everything. But anyway, right, right. I don't want to get you in trouble. So we won't we won't harp on it too much. But Tom, <laughs> thank you so much. If, if our if the pass holders want to find more information about the stuff you've worked on, where would they go? Best place probably to visit my website, uh, which is themeparkcreative.com. Um, you know, I, I, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I've got my own Facebook page under the same name. Um, but certainly hit up my website. That'll that'll uh, pop you into into contact with me wherever you want, want to. So sweet, sweet. Well, may, may, next time we're in Orlando, we'll go grab a bike to eat somewhere, and you can yes. you can share maybe some secrets Absolutely. where you're not being recorded. Okay, <laughs> well, we won't tell anyone about it. Absolutely. So. Excellent. Well, Tom, thank you so much for joining Annual Pass. We really do appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's been it's been great fun. Awesome. Thanks, then. And that was our interview with Tom. That what a what a cool dude and what an awesome awesome job and career. Totally no. First of all, he's so chill. Yeah. Second of all, insane. Like I thought I was a creative. The <laughs> Lego fabricators is what I'm calling you now because you literally yeah. are fabricating something out of thin air in my mind. You're insane. You're 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 a legend. Man, that that is so rad. That is such a cool thing. And like the idea, like the dude's living my dream life, right? <laughs> so like he was building Lego for a living and now he's designing theme park stuff. Awesome. For, it's like that is pretty much if I if I wasn't here in another world <laughs> where the multiverse it, of Jack. Yeah, yeah. If you know the the path less traveled by yeah. kind of situation, I certainly would I would that would be my dream. Look, you could retire as a builder. Like I'm sure, you know, he Maybe. said that speed really wasn't necessary. If you're a problem solver, they might hire be you. Be like Grandpa Jack, like you or know? all these young these young bucks working on their Lego <laughs> and just <be> like, <laughs> taking on my one but twos and then like <laughs> dragging them anyway. Uh, that was very cool. Very, very special thanks to Tom. That, that, that was awesome. Very, very neat. And check him out at themeparkcreative.com as well. Uh, he's got some amazing photos. We, I'm sure we posted a bunch of photos along with the interview throughout this and kind of see the stuff he's worked on. But his website's got even more designs oh, and yeah. ideas. Really, really cool stuff that he's worked on over there. And uh, yeah, but that's pretty much going to wrap it up today. Uh, don't forget to go to our store, store.roosterteeth.com. You can pick up some annual pass merchandise, including... Our annual pass backpacks. So we're gonna do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna work with our team. So we have these little backpacks, which are like the most adorable things. They got a little clip-on thing you put so on a keychain. I want to do a thing where we do some sort of giveaway, where it's like I want people to send in photos of them with their backpacks, and we'll do like a, some kind of gift card giveaway okay. to the Rooster Teeth store. So you get more annual pass merchandise. So go ahead, grab your backpack. I swear I'm gonna. Once I make this happen, I'm gonna yell at them, and be like, "Give me a gift card," and then they're like, <laughs> "Okay." And then you can send in your photos of your, the annual pass, little mini with backpack, mini backpack, in some theme park or somewhere cool on the planet, yes. and then you'll you'll be in, in, entered in to win one of these things. I don't know <laughs> yeah. specific details, but let's make it happen. Coming right. soon. Check Store our socials. dot com. Check it out. Uh, make sure to grab a shirt. We also have hats, all kinds of other mm -hmm. stuff over there mm -hmm. as well. Follow us on all our social media stuff. We are annual underscore pass over at, Roost, or at uh, Twitter and on Instagram. And we are annual pass pod on TikTok, YouTube.com slash annual pass. Uh, question of the week. Good question. We got to do a question for you. So you have unlimited Lego bricks. You have unlimited Lego time. What do you design? What is the thing that you design that you put in your house or your office? Like what, like something you want where it's like, this is something that's going to live here and I'm proud of it. Like, do, would you want to put, I don't know, like, uh, uh, like, uh, maybe do you want to make a baby Yoda? Like, would you want to, would a you want to like a, a full size Iron Man suit? I don't know what you have unlimited Lego bricks. You, you have unlimited Lego knowledge, unlimited Lego time. What would you build and put somewhere in your house office well what would be your thing that you make do you have any ideas do you have anything I mean, I, what springs to mind I right now you said baby yoda and i immediately was like give me that or like they have that you can buy that they, really they have little grogu's you can buy oh my god i think they have like two versions already. or maybe they had regular yoda but now they have baby yoda as well okay well i'm like a fan of decor so like i immediately like can i get like you know how people have like plants? They're like plant mommies. Yeah, yeah. I want like Lego plants, but like full size, like Ooh. on the ground. Like it looks like it's a shrub in your corner, but it's actually Lego. It'd be kind of cool if you had like a Lego palm tree. That's like, what I'm in front, saying. Like in front of your house or something, something where it's like, like that. something looks off about that one. It's like, oh, it's Lego. <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah, I think something like that would be kind of fun. A Lego bookshelf would be kind of cool. Cool. You know, where it's like it's functional, but it's also made out of Lego. That'd be I, I don't know. sweet. But let us know at the comments over at roosterteeth.com. What would you design? 
out of unlimited Lego if given the opportunity. All right. That's going to do it for us today. BK, do you feel like you learned anything today? Oh, I learned so much. I am not a Lego person. So this was so much fun to learn yeah. all about building. I learned that I need to befriend someone who's working at the Lego place because 20 to 50 percent off Lego products. <laughs> Hey, hit me up, man. Annual pass at roosterteeth.com. You can just drop us an email and be like, Listen. Ah, I work there now if you want some half-off <laughs> stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm not down to beg for, for cheaper Lego. Listen. Lego. So Lego is like the second highest per weight item on the planet. Like, like Lego brick is actually more valuable than gold in most what? cases. I think the highest value per item or per like weight thing is printer ink, technically. But then like Lego is next as far as how much it costs. So anyway. But that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for listening and watching. We really, really do appreciate it. It means the world to us. Follow us on the social media stuff to figure out what's going to be happening with mm -hmm. Annual Pass. And uh, make sure to pick up some merch as well because that supports the show. And we really appreciate that. Yeah, but do that'll do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. We will see you next time. Bye, everybody. See ya. See ya.